<coughs> of course, I start by coughing. <laughs> ah, ha, ha. Oh, good. Well, we should be live now. And I go. Oh, and nobody had to listen to me cough. It, it kicked in after that. <laughs> uh, so uh, Eric and I are here, but this means today, because we're on a Google Hangout instead of me doing the special encoder doohickey, that it's going to be one of us or the other that you see. There will no, not be any two faces at the same time. So uh -huh. there is Erica because I clicked on her and everybody should be able to see you now, I'm hoping. Can they hear me even when they don't see me? It's looking positive. Yes, there I see you. And I think okay. they can hear you. Can um, you all hear me even when you don't see me? I'm watching that. Uh, I am apologizing profusely for my scary post-Halloween look. Um, November 1st, our school district very wisely has a no student day every year. I wish our school did that genius i think it's absolutely genius so november 1st is for years and years and years been a pajama day in our house this year awesome. i actually took a shower um so you're getting me with wet hair and and no makeup or anything but um and i told her that any erica but, is a good erica got, after this like, long like cute yorkie flannel pajamas on so oh gosh, they're adorable yeah, well, I wore out the the uh, sheepy ones. <laughs> um, it's good to have sheepy pajamas. The, oh, yes, they were one of the best gifts Abby ever gave me. It's sheepy, uh, sheepy from Old Navy. It was sheepies with knitted hats and scarves and socks on. Uh, Crooked Net so. says that she needs closed captioning, and it should be possible. I have been forever clicking the closed caption link. I don't know how this would work. I don't know if it only works during playback um, after we've recorded the whole thing or not, but there's a small chance that it might work. I don't that know. That would be cool. I know. Wouldn't that be awesome? Because I know uh, more than one person is doing this at work. So. <laughs> so since I saw everybody, <laughs> saw everybody's name or saw Erica and Don. And Don may be joining us later. She's um, she's putting life. things in order with life. Yeah. Um, I've been to Paris. Have I even talked to you since I went to Brussels? No. No. Oh. And then you okay. threw in Nashville in there too for some reason. I did. I had to go to Nashville for a writer's training. I've never been to Nashville before, but I got to tell you. I'm looking forward to going back because oh, cool. Nashville, it rocked the free world. We had a really, really, we had a really good group of people that were all there uh, intensely learning things with, um, which definitely helps. But I like Nashville. We went and heard music because there's music everywhere. There's music in the airport. You go to the like diner in the airport, you're waiting, you know, waiting for your plane and it's an open mic. Oh, wow. They, they have a guitar for you to use if you don't have your own, but most people, huh, most people have their guitar with them because it's the Nashville airport. And, and somebody will play a song or two and then hand the guitar over to somebody else who will get up and play a song or two. Wow. I, that, that would be an experience. It was so very different, but also really kind of cool just getting to see all that that music. And no, I did not get to see Ann Shane. I was, I really, I walked into the airport, into a taxi, into the hotel, into the happy hour at the hotel where we met everybody, into the restaurant, into the bar, into another bar, into my bed, woke up, went to the training, train, 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 train. My brain was dripping out of my ears, went to the airport, so it was went training, home. music and drinking. Because yeah. you're sitting at two bars. Yeah. Well, we had to go to two bars because we had to go to the country swing bar, right? Mm -hmm. And then we had to go to the club next door, which had a cover band who was doing, well, when we walked in, they were covering some Prince songs and then they moved on to Coldplay and then 
um, Shania Twain and who's the guy who does all the, the big anthems, this country, country Western anthem. I did AT. I did not write the perfect country song. Although I understand that if I get mournful enough and talk about my, my poor dog that I could probably pull it off. However, when I say dog, I really do mean dog because Erica oh, is a puppy and I'm going to share the picture with everyone so that they can should I, should I tell the story? Tell the story while I'm pulling up the doggy picture. So it's almost three weeks ago now. Andrew leaves for work, normal, 7.30. 8.15, the door opens, he comes walking back in. I'm like, what's wrong? What's wrong? And he says, I found a puppy. And he says, she's really, really scared. It took me 45 minutes to corral her. Um, I need your help. So we, I go to the backyard and he carries in this adorable pit bull puppy. Everybody um, can see so it now. Scared. She's there. We... We attempted to keep her in the backyard at first when we buried that that very first morning because, you know, we didn't know if she had bugs or was sick or was mean or what. But that lasted approximately seven minutes as she sat out there crying to be let in. So um, the kids have named her Honey, um, which is appropriate with her color. Um, She's, uh, I guess, apparently, according to the vet, her coloring is called Biscuit. Really? So there's an actual name for it. That um, sounds like she's, she's from Nashville. She's t uh, 10 or 11 months old, has all her grown-up teeth. She had no collar, no chip, had never been fixed. So she's now had one of her shots, um, has been declared healthy by the vet. She's getting the rest of her shots tomorrow. She's getting fixed on the 23rd. And the jury is still out on whether we are adopting her or only fostering her. Um, We're voting for adoption. We will see. It's, yes, it's contingent on a few things. But, the, you know, the longer she's here, the less likely it is she's going to leave, right? Yeah. And um, I was never going to do a puppy because I potty trained two children. I wasn't going to house train a puppy, but I've had to eat my words and I have had to work on house training and I've definitely cleaned up pee and poop and uh, no puke yet. Um, there, there are small mercies. Yes. Well, actually, usually they clean up the puke themselves. Um, right. But, uh, She's, yeah, she, she uh, attacked my Malabrigo fiber. She thought it was delicious. Them's fighting words. And then this is what she did to a skein of Patton's Croy. Oh, man. Supposed to look like this. I mean, it, it had the, the, the ball band on it and everything. And then this is what she did with a skein of Knit Picks Hawthorne that was supposed to be socks for my mom. Uh, but, uh, a friend of ours was horrified at the thought that, what, she ruined $17 worth of yarn? $17? And I just laughed. I'm like, dude, that was a pair and a half of socks. That's that's nothing. That's nothing for sock yarn. You have no idea. So yeah, she she likes she likes fibery things. <laughs> well, she's she got she's the perfect dog for you. So yes, of course. Well, no, she would be per perfect. Would be leaving it alone. Yeah. But at votes for honey biscuit for a name. Yeah, I like that. I actually, I wanted I wanted. Well, first I said cinnamon, but Andrew said, no, that's a stripper's name. And then, um, and then I said ginger and Sarah said that was too obvious. So, um, so I got, I got downvoted. We're, we've gone with honey. So, uh, and of course the ironic thing is that the one who brought her home is the one who's 
who's voting for just fostering. And when, when challenged on that, and you know, why did you bring her home? Um, well, he said, because I have a heart. I'm, I'm human, I couldn't just leave her running lost on the street, scared, so. Uh, I think you might wanna try and train her to work like Vicky's dog, because Vicky's dog only attacks yarn if it's in a ball, not in a skein. Smart, smart animal there. Yes, well, I, At he has good he has good reason for for being hesitant. He he ended up last time, despite what everybody said with our last dog, he ended up being primary dog walker, and had definite feelings about the three thousand dollar knee surgery. Oh my god! And the surgery for her lipomas and then the cancer um so he 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 had definite feelings about all that so were were we to are if we are to keep her there will have to be an agreed agreed upon max of this is the max we'll pay for any sort of medical intervention um yeah because while she is a family member, she is not a child. Um, yeah, and it so, can get really pricey really fast. Yeah, and I, I will um, look into pet insurance to see if that'll make any difference, if that's worthwhile. Um, but yeah. meanwhile, we're working on the sit and stay and heal and halt and and pads. come back here do you have have you guys been using pee pads uh no she's actually been doing really well she's oh, good she's, she's, she's doing really well i think the times that there have been oopsies have been um when we weren't reading her signs yep that's the same with kids you know, it's our fault um or else didn't make sure she went before we put her in the crate since we create her when we're not around. Yep. Um, or like the first time when it was, you know, her first time for more than 10 minutes in the crate and she was in there for two hours and she was scared and sure. And she did all kinds of things in there. Um, That's a puppy. So, but puppies are a lot of work. I did, we had, we used our old dog's collar on her at first and much as we tightened it, it would loosen and become too big. So about a week and a half ago, or a little, just over a week ago, I was walking her and she slipped out of the collar. And she went tearing down the street. Not because she wants to get away from us, because she's actually got separation anxiety and abandonment issues very she's clearly. A puppy. She, I mean, she... If I don't close the bathroom door, she tries to crawl up on my lap while I'm on the toilet. She's, she's definitely got separation anxiety. Um, but she just wants to run because she's a puppy and she's a pit and she's fast and she just wants to run. And I ran after her off my clogs and did a face plant. I'm so glad and you didn't break an ankle. I am so glad. Yes, I have, for those who don't know, I have an ankle that's been broken once. The foot has been broke. That foot has been broken once and the ankle has been sprained probably four times at least. Um, but I did scratch my glasses. The lens was starting to pop out. I'm really lucky I didn't break them. You can't see it now. This, this was the least of it, but there's a cut right in my writing my scar from my previous face coming between, or glasses coming between my face and something hard injury, but right along here and down here, and it was swollen and it's, it's still just a little tender and there's a little, you can just barely see in the good light, you can barely see a little bit of a green bruise here. But that was just lovely. My knee, is all messed up and wrecked my best jeans. My finger is kind of icky oh, and wow. actually really hurts. 
I thought for a while it was broken because it was all swollen and stiff, but I don't know. I still, I still think it might be because it, it hurts down oh. and sometimes even into my arm. Oh, that, so. that sounds like a hairline fracture. That's the direction they'd go. And that's, yeah, I don't know that they can do anything beyond putting a splint on it, but why don't you have a splint on it? Because I didn't go to the doctor for it because I figured, what are they going to do? You can go to CVS for it. Go get a splint. Do you remember do when I first moved to Tucson and I broke a finger? We have pictures. I think, I think it was actually my middle finger that I broke. There are pictures on the Craftlet website of me with the finger splint on it. And um, if you don't put a splint on it, the kinds of things that seem to happen is uh, some way you'll get your finger twisted and you have not screamed. I'm sorry, childbirth and fingers with fractures going all the way down. You haven't screamed like that yet. It's bad. Oh, Put a splint on it because the, I mean, you get, you know, you get a splint that goes down. So there'll be one side coming down here and one side coming down here. So it's awkward, obviously, but um, you can really do permanent damage with a, a hairline fracture that doesn't get um, compressed properly. And then you just, you know, you tape around it on the way down, but girlfriend. Oh, and asks if there's swelling it's it's a little bit swollen still it was it was very noticeably swollen at, at yeah. first um yeah but the fact that the swelling has gone I, down just means that time has passed too because your body acclimates to it yeah it's i can i can see that it's swollen i don't know if anybody else would would notice but i could see um Am I going to have yeah, to my... and put a splint on you myself? Well, if you do, you probably need to put one on this finger too. The, the one that I hurt back in August when we were visiting Sarah and I fell when we were doing a photo shoot. And I thought nothing of it at the time. And then it's when a bruise looking and still, that was August. It's still red right here and right here. And it gets Woman. frequently... And I mean, what are you going to do for a pinky? You put a splint on it. And, and unfortunately, you probably have to not knit for a little bit. Is that your left hand? That's your left hand. Yes, the, the pinky is the left hand, but index finger is the right hand. And I am very definitely right-handed. Oh, that's hilarious. Um, you can still crochet. No, I can't because after after about 10 minutes, it makes my thumb and my middle finger numb. Have you tried holding the crochet hook like um, like a baby holds a spoon? Like that? It'll go slow, but it'll go. I can't imagine how that would work. Um, clumsily be... and awkwardly. But it's it's like just, you know, teaching yourself British and Continental and then teaching yourself the Irish production stuff. It's... It's just practice, mm. but I'm, you know, if you can fix your finger and still do something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you're just like me. I can, I can give excellent advice when it comes to healthcare and things like that. And then there's me and I haven't gotten my flu shot yet again. But part of that was because I didn't notice that it was October because October was spent on an airplane. It isn't a new necklace, AT, but it is, an, it is a necklace that I haven't worn before on the show. But if I turn it, you can see it is a tile from Scrabble. Oh, it's a Scrabble tile? Yeah. Yeah, I and then somebody... What's on the front of it, what the picture is. I'm going to see if I can take it off and put it closer to the camera because I can't get my neck closer to the camera it's it's a little butterfly is that a butterfly i can't or is yeah it's a butterfly you know what i'm wondering if i can get mm -hmm, let's see technology i know whatever um sometimes it just needs a solid background to go up against 
Focus there. Oh, it focused for almost a split second. Well, I can see the colors if, if yeah, anything else. Yeah, the thing that's annoying about it having focused for a second and then not is that there's um, the way people do all the journaling kind of stuff these days where um, you have like writing in the background that's kind of been gwashed over and... Um, oh, the and art then, journals? Yeah. And then the butterflies on top of that. And it's, it's kind of a yellowish um, background AT that has the writing on it. And then it's a, a brownish, reddish, kind of a forest greenish butterfly. But I like it. And I especially like the fact that it's on like the old school chain because the other chains, the pokey part where the circle you know, there's a oh, little circle uh -huh. clasp part that you you have to hold and and open in order that to put it together. You? Yeah, those things, the pokey part just drives my neck crazy. I, the older I get, the less I can have anything on my neck. I don't know why. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but on the can't have anything on my neck thing. Did I show this last time when we were here? Oh, wow. I don't think so. So this was my, my friend Sam went to Ireland and she got, this is the top part of it, um, because it is a cowl and it goes, it's touching my legs right now. It is huge. Wow. It is so soft and warm and I have left the tag on it because I was, I knew I was going to read it. Of course, I, that means I have to find the tag on it. But I know it's here somewhere. And um, it's so soft. And at first when I saw it, I thought, oh, but wool on my neck. And that's usually, you know, if I wash it myself, then I can leave enough lanolin in it that it's okay. But this came from Blarney. Blarney, Blarney Woolen Mills in Ireland. It is their heritage collection. And they have blended it. So it is 40% wool, 30% viscose, 20% polymede. So we've got two non-animal sources and then 10% cashmere. Interesting. So it has, it has good give to it. Does any, honestly, does anyone know the difference between viscose and polymide? They're both polyesters, right? It is very Ma Maureen O'Hara. I can, I have I, a picture of me somewhere in it, but. I don't think, I don't think viscose necessarily is, but let me. I shall look. You can look while I appear French because I have something else that I got in France. I did not get a beret. Andrew wouldn't let me get a beret. So oh. instead, I got a cloche. Oh, how cute is right. that? Right, I oh, know. That's adorable. You look great. Thank you so much. And it's, uh, it's not only a cloche that looks like it's solid, you know, it doesn't look like it's a squishy hat, but it's a squishy hat and it's 90% wool, but it's, I have a big head. Nice. I think we all know that already, right? But, yeah, oh, so do I. Oh, it drives me nuts. It's all those brains. Plant derived. Aha. Viscose is rayon. Plant derived. Yes, that's what I was going to tell you. It's a, a viscous orange brown solution obtained by treating cellulose with sodium hydroxide and carbon disulfide. Oh. Used as the basis of manufacturing rayon fiber and transparent cellulose film. Hi, Kathy. So they, Kathy's here. Yay. I missed you this year. So Barbara said also what they used to call bamboo is now called viscose from bamboo. And now this is all making sense to me. That's, um, <laughs> that is so cool. And polyamide is a I synthetic polymer of a type made by the linkage of an amino group of one molecule and a carboxylic acid group of another, including many synthetic fibers, such as nylon. Of course it is. A type, not a specific fiber, but a type of, of fiber. So that was, okay, Barbara just said polymide is the European name for nylon. That's what I've been wondering, but have you seen polymide starting to creep in to American labels. And the first place yes. I noticed it was American Yarn started using it, some. 
Um, I guess they thought it sounded better than nylon. But it's, I've seen Sounds it. Sound more official than acrylic. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I, I know, Kathy, who knew that you were going to get this education when you tuned in today? Uh, speaking of yarn, we tried... Oh, no, I have it over there. We tried to go to yarn stores in Paris. We managed to get to a couple. Um, several of us went to different ones around the city. Um, Brussels. I got a walking tour of old Brussels, which is spectacular. I've seen websites saying, oh, Brussels kind of boring and eh, don't go. Oh, Brussels was awesome. Uh, beautiful, old, uh, really great people. And because the EU is there, everybody speaks English. Oh, uh, and the, the other hint that I heard was um, in Brussels, not Paris, in Brussels, you'll be given an option. They'll say, do you want this charged or do you want the debit card? Do you want this rung up in dollars or in euros? And the answer is dollars. Because regardless oh, yeah. of the exchange rate, you don't get charged the translation fee, the going back and forth between things. But do dollars are not necessarily, I mean, it's not necessarily in our favor right now. But, but you at least avoid a one fee. And that was good. But Brussels was awesome. I ate mussels in Brussels. Mussels in Brussels? Evidently is a thing. Yeah. I, I know. But they're gluten-free. And, you know, we get a big vat of mussels that have been soaking in uh, butter, white wine, and cream sauce, which makes it kind of a chowder at the end, but a, a water, a thinner chowder at the, at the end, which actually was really good. And I'm not much of a seafood person, so that was kind of cool. Uh, lots of good wine. S uh, an old square, like a the town hall is there, but it's also all the merchant buildings were there because Brussels was the hub. Um, Antwerp was the big fabric city when all the merchant boats, the, the East India Company and everybody, well, and for hundreds of years before that, everything went in and out of Antwerp. Everything went in and out of Brussels. So putting the EU there actually made a whole lot of sense because everybody was already doing stuff there business-wise anyway, and they spoke a ton of different languages. The upper half of Brussels either speaks Flemish or Dutch, and the lower half speaks um, French, and then everybody in the middle speaks English. So it's... Um, it's <laughs> AT did, will you eat yeah. them in a box? Will you eat them with a fox? <laughs> will you spread them on your locks? Uh, no. I think locks and muscles would be overkill. But in a box, sure. Um, but they had this, this old town square, which is where we found this place, that uh, every two years, so they do it every other year, they take the entire cobblestone center. And it's like the big square in Prague you may have seen pictures of. It's like a slightly smaller version of that. They completely carpet the cobblestones in this square with flowers and it's not oh. randomly done it's like um you know those buddhist sand paintings where the guys are doing some mandala kind right. of it's exactly the same idea they plan out or or corn maze it's the same thing they'll plan out like what kind of design they're going to do because you can get to the towers in all of these different buildings you can get to the top floor and you can look down and then you see the picture Oh, yeah. And it's like a carpet. It looked, the one that I saw that was this last April looked like a Persian carpet. But wow, you know, the size of an acre and a half of town square. So Brussels is pretty cool. They do a lot. It's kind of like New York. Everybody lives kind of outside of their apartment or their, their home. And their apartments are really awesome. Even their little ones. I love the Brussels. It was very nice. And I think I'm going back in January for another teaching extravaganza. Nice. But I'll try and bring everybody chocolate. If only. The Belgian chocolate really, people are not lying when they say it's really good. It's really, really good. No, they're not lying. No, 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 it's really, really good. And it's dangerously good. But they were, um, no way. Oh, Kathy Googled pictures of the carpet. Isn't that so cool? I know. It's really, really neat. 
Oh, Barbara, Barbara, is that the Santa Barbara? I have to look up. Yes. Yes, yeah, she said Santa Barbara Channel. I'll be darned. So the mussels were growing on the legs of oil rigs. So one of the things that was happening here in Philadelphia, uh, and I think Chesapeake Bay, but don't quote me on that, is that a bunch of students at university, there are so many of them, I don't remember if it was Drexel or Temple or where, they figured out that uh, there'd been an invasion of bivalves. It, you know, it was probably Asian bivalves because it's the Asian flu and the stink bugs. And Sounds like stuff. a it's, bad movie. I know. Of the like, so the Godzilla bivalves invaded and they, um, they were cleaning the water at a ridiculous rate. And so to prove this, when we went down to the Ben Franklin uh, Institute and they had a science fair day a couple of years ago, they had fish tanks full of really disgusting water. And, you know, the, the sides of the fish tank had started to get gross and all of that. And they had several of these that they had pre-planned. And then they had these bivalves in clean water. And so they took them out and they were all on a chunk of wood or a rock and put them in the dirty water and they started a clock so there was a timer on the on the wall and or on the the outside of the aquarium wall and they said all right you know come back in five minutes and you come back and it is noticeably cleaner and you come back in an hour and it's crystalline so they they've been doing things like what barbara was talking about where they're putting um Lakes are a problem, Barbara, and she's not wrong. Uh, uh, yeah, but in rivers and ocean, if you have saltwater bivalves, um, as long as the water is moving, they don't seem to take over quite so much. But the St. Lawrence River up where we were this summer, they said, you know, when you do water tests, your water has to be something like 96% pure or 94% pure of certain contaminants. The St. Lawrence River is purer than your tap water because of the bivalves that came in. But the lake, the lake thing is a problem because the water isn't moving. And then they take over other species and that's not so good. But who knew bivalves were such good things to have around? As long as they're not killing off the native species that are supposed to be there. Exactly. Maybe, it, maybe what it means is eat more mussels. Because if we're the predator, then it's all good. So what have you been knitting? What have you been working on with your finger? Okay, so... Harry House and movies. I, I finished The Boring Socks of Boringness. I don't know if you saw that. No. That was when I, I was in and out. I finished them and, and gave them to the recipient who loved them. Yay. And just as an illustration of how... Have, pairing the right yarn with the right pattern makes a difference. Mm-hmm. Okay, those took me, what, two years or something ridiculous because it just made me want to poke out my eyeballs doing a plain pattern with plain solid color yarn. These Ooh. took me eight days. What? So, yeah. Wow. Dude, just one more stripe. Just one more stripe. I want to see what stripe is next. Did you do those toe uh, up? Yes, 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 yes. Toe up. Mm-hmm. Um, though I must say, on the Boring Socks of Boringness, the Kitchener on there was probably the best Kitchener I've ever done. Because um, you were so happy to be done with it? Something. So you t- time and pride. But I'm so lazy. I've worn these, but I still haven't put, I have to weave in the ends. I've done that with socks before. But uh, this is just my usual three by one rib. And nice. then it has just a very basic um, short row heel. Yep. Which looks great with the striping yarn, right? Yes, it does. Uh-huh. That's what I was thinking. It doesn't feel as durable as a, a slip stitch heel. Because mm-hmm. um, that's not... okay. So this yeah. is um, Patton's Croy. Um, awesome. Which is, you know, a good workhorse $6 skein yarn so you can make a pair of socks for 12 bucks or and they're do, washable and they're washable yes and then 
my I can say this because my parents don't watch. Um, my mom is having issues with hair falling out, and oh. and so her hair she wears her hair in a bun up on top of her head. Her hair is actually down past her waist, but wow. she wears it in a bun up on top of her head. And as her hair is thinning, that bun is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Right. Um, but she wanted some headbands to kind of hold, hold the hair, the whis hold the wispies in place and to sort of cover up that she's, she's losing. Right. So I cranked out a couple of, um, can't even find the same, uh, Entrelac headbands. This one is Filatura di Croso 127 print. That's pretty. In mocha, and it's not even a whole skein. It's, and then, this one is some uh, Noro Kurian that I had. Oh, pretty. Like, once again, not even a whole skein. Those are great. And I was actually very pleased with how my Kitchener on these turned out too, because it's, I, how I guess- How do you measure a, for the, how much to put, do around? I uh, kept holding it up to my head. Because I wasn't sure if you had to do the subtract 10% the same way that you do with socks. Oh, uh, for a I, I kind of held it up and, and stretched it. And, but I, I actually was quite pleased with how my, my seam came out. Wow, what seam? Yeah, right there. Nice. And then on this one, too. And your, your mom is up north of you, right? Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, she's about an hour north in Sonoma. So do they get windy? In Sonoma as well? Uh, not so much windy, but they, they get more extreme both directions. When it's hot, it gets really hot up there. And yeah. in the winter, it can get really cold. It can get wow. down in the 30s at night. Wow. Um, so uh, I probably ought to make her something a little wilder too, not just those neutral Erica colors. But um, I, I was, I was going to make her a pair of socks. But what do you think the chances are that you're going to be able to untangle the tangle? Um, I have a friend who finds that entertaining dealing with yarn barf. So mm -hmm. I'm going to give her both those batches of yarn barf and she's going to have fun fixing them. She, she did that for another friend in our knitting group. He had this just huge, huge thing of yarn barf and it was so bad I think there was even a purse in there oh my and, god um uh she she undid that for him and just had a blast I was gonna say so, hire your kids and, that, and then I I realized I need I because so much of what I work on is complicated and not take along knitting um Sorry, I'm distracted. There's a big spider across the room on the wall. Um, and I know I'm not going to get up and kill it. Um, I decided I need to always have socks on the needles. So I did some more uh, Patton's oh. Croy socks. Those are They're, cute. I uh, love the colors. Once again, toe up, three by one rib, um, fraternal twins. Those are beautiful. So, when you start your toe up, do you start with the two two circs or two, uh, two needles where you do the kind of figure eight. Oh, and here I'm the J Judy's magic cast on. Yeah. Judy's magic cast on. I couldn't remember. Yep. I love that. And it's, it's way awesome. It, it, you can't see. Yeah. Hang on. Wait, 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 don't, don't take it away. Yeah. That's, that's where it starts and you just can't tell. Yeah. It's, I love it. It's awesome. So, Somewhere along the way, I'm going to make this into socks for my mom. Ooh. Something a little wilder. What's the... Speck on. Dude, hang on. So that's blue, blue speckles and green? It's blue and black. And a couple of bits of purple speckles on, on, on uh, white. Yep, I can see the purple now. It's kind of a raspberry purple. And this that's is... Really um, Knit picks Hawthorne, which feels sturdier than the stroll. Because right. I like the colors of stroll, but it's, it's kind of pilly and soft. 
So I don't know that I would necessarily use strolls for socks. Yeah. Um, but this is a, has a tighter twist, so it, it shouldn't, um, it shouldn't pill. And this is the other skein of the Croy that she, she didn't destroy. So I think I have a skein can't really that. do anything with this until the other one is rescued because yeah. this will only get you one sock. Um, you could do toe up both ends at once and get as far as you can get. I, I thought about that. We'll see once I finish these ones I have on the needle. Um, um, Barbara, the, Barbara said something about Hawthorne. I'm assuming that's a Knit Picks yarn. Hawthorne being yeah, a good value. Have you used it? Yeah, and it, is, it is more tightly spun than the stroll. And they even say that on the website. Really? So um, that's why I chose it. That's good to know. I haven't bought anything. Strange. It's, it's, it's the dog chewing on her chewy bone. She's got a puppy chewy bone that she loves. She's in the crate chewing away. What a cute doggy. She, she's, she's amazing. Yeah, and AT says um, if you do the, if you start two ends, two ends, two socks, uh, you can change the color part way when you're, done, when, when you're done with the first skein. But I was thinking if you start it that way and you can only get, you know, chunks of the other skein unbarfed, I don't know what the verb is, um, that you, uh, if you, if you can only get chunks, that would be really miserable for the second sock when the first sock went so clean and easy. Oh, but if you have right chunky chunkiness then if the colors don't completely match at least it'll be random on both of them and maybe i'd just end up with short socks that is another option or baby in socks. which case they would probably be for my mom because that's what she wants she wants short socks with a roll top like the rose city rollers Ooh. um because she has issues with the cuffs um, itchy so does, she thinks the roll top would be more comfortable do the do the other ones they're just too itchy on her skin i the the tightness she's she finds them binding she's got issues with her extremities and um sometimes yep. has swelling and stuff so she thought that the the uh, the mythical summers we have <laughs> yes well our our, our mythical summer is is over this is the end of the our our, our quote summer weather is basically mid, middle of august to middle or end of october um she's close enough to san francisco falls. that she gets the the cool damp and then um last night was only the second time i ever remember it raining during trick-or-treat wow Usually the rain waits until after, but last night was the second time. But um, no one's complaining because we are in a drought. Yeah. And we actually, last year, we had the fewest uh, trick-or-treaters that we've ever had. Um, but this year we had more and that was great. And we gave out all five pounds of our candy that we got, so. Wow. I got to go uh, for one of the rare times um, in the last 10 years uh thing two went to a halloween party with a bunch of friends uh and the moms were just going to get together and drink wine so i got to sit there with other adult people and have a glass of wine and just laugh and nice. uh, i haven't been able to talk to you guys and so i haven't you know, when I was in Paris, I got to talk to people. Actually, I got, and I got to see listeners who I never get to see, which was really fun. Yeah, you got to see Renee. And... I did. And, oh, it was so nice to see Renee. She's, and I got to sit and have lunch with her several times. It was just really, really nice. And um, met families from, let's see, where did we have families from? We had from Minneapolis, St. Paul. We had Eau Claire, Wisconsin. We had Omaha. I think it was Omaha, Nebraska the town that's name is escaping me in New Hampshire. And we had a bunch of mother daughter teams, which was really awesome. Yeah. 
there were a lot of really cool people. And, and then we had this one single guy who turned out to be the most interesting person I've ever come across. And I was never completely sure whether he listened or had started listening to the podcast or not. But I mentioned something when we were looking at uh, Hemingway's place and all the, all the crazy stories of the, the drinking and all this stuff. He'd sneak up on me and say, you know, one of the things that you should know about this. And then he'd tell me some like deeply guarded, crazy historical tidbit about whatever it was that we were looking at. It was so much fun. And, you know, when, when we all sit down the first night, um, we had a luncheon the first day and then a bunch of us went down to knit the first night. Um, there was some socks that rock next to me. So I was drooling into my wine. Um, he just, he was really kind of quiet and I wasn't sure if he was ever going to really talk to anybody, but he did. And he was so much fun. So we had, cool. a, we had a great group of people. Oh, oh, I have to tell you, speaking of Halloween, the best Halloween costume I think that I saw other than Abby and her friends going as people from Heather's was, um, one of Sarah's friend friends dressed as the wall from stranger things that is not the only one i've seen of the that wall with the alphabet and the christmas lights yes it was awesome it was awesome. she had the lights and it it was it was great yeah i have a friend from kaplan from new york and my husband right before i got here said oh you need to see his halloween costume he's he's um He's not super tall, so he was able to find a pink girl's dress, a smocked dress, <laughs> and he's got a buzz cut, and he found those socks from uh, the 1970s the with the, stri- the tube socks with the stripes, and he's standing there in his, in his sneakers and this outfit, just looking, <laughs> looking like he wants to kill. He's doing- That's great. His wife was the wall. Her friend, also female, uh, was the cop. And then her husband was uh, h- hanging out next to the, the lights. And he was Winona Ryder in her army jacket. That's great. It was so fantastic. And yes, Winona forever. And yes, Kathy Sharp. Ha ha. Scotland 2018. There will be more information on the next Craftlet tour. It will not be next fall because Diane and I would like to go to Rhinebeck. <laughs> it's just Scotland in 2018. Yeah. I yep. gotta say my pet Scotland is, is on my bucket list, and I actually know people in Scotland. Oh, well then, yes. No, we have Diane, Diane and I have been going back and forth with uh, bucket list things for Scotland. But then what Diane does is she starts doing research on literature and um, Outlander. and Because we were talking about Culloden and all this stuff. I don't know what she's going to be able to fit in. But as Kathy knows, um, she runs a sharp ship. So there will there will be no lack of awesome in Scotland in 2018. So it'll be springtime 2018. Um, nice. And I can't Lots remember. Lambs. Lambies. I know there will be you know, lambs and wool and kilts and and whiskey. There, there is a possibility. I, I can't give out the whole list, but there is a possibility that the drama department at school will do the Scottish play next fall. Oh, that, that would be extremely ambitious. Um, but that there is a possibility they did. They did survive their production of the doll's house <laughs> they did it <laughs> black box style which was interesting being that close um as i i believe i've told you there was much drama over the casting yes uh, what what did what did she wind up was she the understudy she was what? the understudy for christine the supporting role and she, her actual role was one of the children, so she had like two lines. Um, but she was the understudy for Christine, and she knew that part inside and out, and upside and downside. And 
everything. Um, and she yeah. was the assistant director. That's right. I knew she had some, some important so, thing. Um, and Think the dog destroyed her chewy bone. Yes, please throw that away, Sarah. Thank you. Um, thing two here had his own drama with drama this last, uh, with the, in the last couple of weeks. They were, they're doing the junior version of Into the Woods, which is Sondheim and massive and hard. And he decided that he was, you know, such a musical genius that he didn't really need to rehearse his audition. And yeah, yeah. so he has now learned, which is good, but he got lucky and he, because he has, he has pretty good comic timing. He's the steward in Into the Woods. So if you, if anybody knows the show, he's the prince's steward who bonks Jack's mother on the head. So he gets to, he gets to bonk somebody on the head cool. with his staff, staff of mightiness. And, uh, and he's just very relieved to be considered one of the cast instead of just one of the chorus. So we told him he was lucky he squeaked in and, oh, and, and uh, along with all the performative stuff, uh, thing one has another video uh, that he's done up online. He's had to do these PSAs for his health class. And instead of doing a poster saying, you know, don't drink kind of stuff, he's Do been doing do videos. He's been doing videos and he, he's, it is clearly now a series. Uh, the first one was on drinking. The second one was on cybersecurity. And he, he tries to voice it like he's um, a 1940s radio, radio announcer. So it's oh, very cool. much, Hey kids, what you need to know about this is, and he, he just rips through this, he had five minutes of audio as far as the script went and he recorded it in about three minutes and 20 seconds because he talked great. that fast and and his his whole thing is what you need to do is use don't when you get an email that says it wants you to download something don't and when your friend tries to hand you a beer don't and if if you can't use don't please contact a uh, or please go to the party with a friend who does use don't that's great. They're really, really funny. And I thought, man, I would have paid a lot more attention when I was in high school if that's what the right the PSAs look like. So does like. he have to do one on STIs? Because, you know, they call them STIs now, not STDs. Really? Yes. Sexually transmitted infections. infections. Well, that does sound a little more gnarly. I don't know. I think disease sounds more gnarly. Hmm. I don't know. Lori Anderson has a PSA. No. Oh. On what, I wonder. I know. I got to see her live doing um, her Moby Dick thing. Oh, interesting. It really was. She's, she's incredible. Is anyone else watching uh, Once Upon a Time this season? Do you ever watch Once Upon a Time? Oh, we're behind. We're behind. I got lost last season and I've had to catch up because I am now an official co-host for the Once Upon a Time podcast. Are you really? Oh, cool. I am. And, and why? Because I am the classics expert. Because last season, who shows up in the final uh, two episodes? Jekyll and Hyde. Awesome. Right? So you have Regina the evil queen who has managed to suppress her dark side. You can see what's coming. Right. And then Jekyll and Hyde shows up, show up, shows up. Well, no, I guess shows up. Uh, Jekyll right. shows up and there's Hyde. Uh, and they managed to do something with this actor that I didn't, I, I really need to look at a still photograph of him from several different scenes because I think they're, I think they read the book because he, he doesn't, you know, Hyde is supposed to be big and scary in that he's, you can feel the potential for violence on him. Mm -hmm. But the description of him is always, nobody can really quite describe him properly, except to say that there's something wrong with him, but they can't put their finger on it. And he's, something about him is attractive enough that he, people talk to him and interact with him and, and all of that. So the guy who they got to play him is in his normal life, really 
quite attractive. But there's always something about him that's just off. Like he has one, one contact lens, I guess, that's red. Not like vampire red, but red like he got punched in the eye red. Oh, and, uh-huh. And so, and so it's just, you don't notice it at first. Like, wow, that's something is wrong with that guy. And oh, that. But then the next time you see him, I can't tell if what they're doing is um, desymmetricalizing his face. There, I'm making up words again. You know, so like they're putting the putty somewhere so that one side of his face doesn't quite match the other side. Right. I can't tell, but they did a great job. And then with him, they're able to bring in all these other stories from that time period. So now they've got kind of this steampunky strain going. And for those who listened to Bleak House, you will be happy to know if you didn't see it yourself that, yeah, Kathy, his eyes do creep me out too. Um, When uh, Hook is on his ship, there's some guy who's a stowaway and Hook says to the guy, what's your name? And the guy says, I'm nobody. And if you listened to Bleak House or if you took Latin, you, you might have been able to figure out that that was Captain Nemo because Nemo means no one in Latin. Ah. And so sure enough, within like 35 seconds, the Nautilus shows up and they did a beautiful job with the Nautilus. It's great. And the Count of Monte Cristo popped up, but they, boy, did they butcher that one. Everybody else, they did well, but. The original international man of mystery. Yeah. And you know what they did is they let him walk up to somebody and say, ha ha. And he stabs him and says, I have my vengeance. I'm like, oh my God. The man spends 600 pages hiding his identity so that he can wait to drain all the life out of these people that he wants to wreak vengeance on. But boy, did they choke that one. I wasn't happy. You're looking at what Toshi said. I am. I'm trying to read fast going, ah, it's not going to happen. Um, Anyway, so Once Upon a Time podcast uh, is live. It broadcasts live, which is scary for me. This has been scary for me. Um, Wednesday, 7 o'clock Eastern is when we broadcast live. And it's the Once podcast because, of course, it is not an official Disney podcast, so it can't be the Once Upon a Time podcast. That would yes, be I can't. copyright infringement. Understand. Be careful. Yes, yes. Indeed. Well, well, have you been making anything? I have been making goo goo eyes at, at Halloween candy. Yeah. No, I've What's been good. We- I actually got fabric in. Oh, I do have one thing. Um, <clears throat> I've got fabric in Paris because I thought, oh, I want to make, I want to go back and do some more of the little uh, quilty things. And then the reason I got the fabric was because I found at a store called Frou-Frou. Frou-Frou? Frou-Frou. F-R-O-U-F-R-O-U. Frou. Which, yeah, you won't be able to see it. I got this little, this little zippery case for notions and things. And it's really nice because the sides of it are padded. So it's, you know, it holds together really well. But they had an entire table of thimbles and I had mentioned before that I had a hard time measuring and getting the right size thimble well now I've got one and they actually have sizes on I know it's backwards for everybody else Uh, it's a large but it has the little divots on top let's see Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I wonder how far away the distance is there it goes so it's that, and it's also kind of vented on top, which is great, and all the way down on the bottom. And then I got just a regular thimble thimble, but it's the kind that has the raised edge around the top so that you can, if you're actually quilting, you can really go in and um, and it, the needle won't slip off, which you can imagine would be uncomfortable. So it's very... It was very nice, and I'm, I'll show you guys the fabric when I've actually cut some out, because I think when you look at it, when it's just the fat quarters, it's kind of, eh. But, but there was that, and AT has to go back to work, and so do yeah, I. And, ah, uh, Kathy, I know, I was heartbroken. 
and didn't I see somebody else? Oh, yes, AT, the podcast does stay online. So once podcast, uh, it's just like, it's just like Craftlet. If you go on iTunes, you can get it's the once podcast. There. Yeah, and it's just there forever. Um, and so you're the guy talking who about it. notions, and you reminded me, um, it, it's, it has been a long time since we, since we podcast. Um, I know. Back in early October, we went to an amazing wedding down uh, about halfway between here and LA. Ooh. And uh, amazing because it was a couple who used to be married to each other, and they were divorced for over 20 years, and then they got remarried. So wow. Amazing, amazing. But while we were down there the night before, and we're just bopping around the tiny little downtown of Atascadero, California, we stumbled upon Alana Dacos of Never Not Knitting. She has a storefront now. What? We stumbled upon it. And she's got a very small amount of yarn, but it's all Quince and Company and Yarn on the House and stuff like that that you don't normally see in brick and mortar stores. Yep. And then 8 million adorable little notions thingies. Um, cable needles, you know, that you wear uh, around your neck, um, stitch markers on like a necklace thing where you can just take it off and use it as a stitch marker, little tape measures and little pouches and all kinds of doodads and things. And there's a, a tree outside the shop that that's all yarn bombed and stuff. So very that was, cool. That was fun. Uh, the girl at the shop was uh, uh, impressed that I knew all about. It. I'm like, oh yeah, I met Alana at Stitches, and you know she got two kids, right? And you know, oh yeah, there's her book, and you know, explaining to Andrew and stuff. So right, because the explaining. So no, it was it was it was cool. She's like, oh wow, you do know what you're talking about. But, yay. Uh, like, oh yeah, I used to listen to her podcast and yay. Stuff. So that was that was fun. When when podcasting fun. worlds collide. I, right? Strangers in the night. All right. I have to get back to work. Yes. Yes, everybody, everybody's bailing. But yes, Kathy, uh Scotland. I'll see you yeah. there. And everybody else, wouldn't it be cool if everybody who comes to the live stream, if we could just all show up in Scotland and, you know. Oh, that would be amazing. Travel together. I'm not kidding. Craftlet people, y'all are fun to travel with. Yeah. Well, you know, if I do, if we do go to Scotland and if we go um, to the right places in Scotland, I'll have to invite my friend Vicky to, to join us for some things even if she doesn't do the whole trip you know and if we're in her town to uh is she is she in she's in scotland yeah she's in uh near glasgow i you know i don't know and actually that's the answer to kathy's question too is um i don't know when diane's going to have a link i know that last week she had a different tour she had to get off the ground and she was going to try and finalize things this week um, if that happens, you will see the tour button pop back up on the sidebar in Craftlet on the craftlet.com uh, page. And, uh, and that's how you'll know that there's a tour cooking up. Well, if you'll let us know. Yeah. Well, and yeah, and we've got, um, Oh, I haven't put my new calendar up. We have weekly podcasts coming up for the next three, four weeks. This week okay. plus, I think it's the next three. So uh, you'll, if I hear it, you'll hear it between now and then. We should definitely know before Thanksgiving. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. All right, Diane's well, have a good rest of your week, my dear. And again, I apologize to everybody for my scary post-Halloween look, but, you know, too bad. Uh, you don't look like a scary clown, and therefore you do not look scary. 
Oh, yes. Yeah, or Five Nights at Freddy's. That's no, 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 no scary clowns. Yeah, no, scary clowns are bad. Me and Sam Winchester, scared of the scary clowns. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I, but I did wear my scary, you're never supposed to wear stripes on camera because they strobe, but my hair's been in the way enough. But this was one of my Parisian because stripes. And right. seriously, everyone, everyone wore black and white and lots of stripes. It is not. Really? Yes, it's not. I mean, it's not a joke. And in fact, Martina, who is um, one of the uh, travelers, who, she came down from Germany. She, she saw me the first day I had, I think I had this. I had this on with a black sweater over it and black skinny jeans and black boots like ankle boots. A clap of tea? And no, I didn't have a clap of tea because mine is colorful. I couldn't wear it. So she, she, she saw me come downstairs and said, wow, you look very European today. And I thought, yes, I did it. I pulled it off because I went on Pinterest and said, what do you wear in France? What do you wear in Paris? Stripes, oh, black and white, everybody. Well, now I yep. know. I know. These things you can find on Pinterest. Who knew? Yeah. More than you ever wanted or needed. I know. So. I know. It's the rabbit hole of rabbit holes. All right. Absolutely. Well, have All a right. great week. I'll talk to you. I'll talk to you next week. I'll yes. Talk to, I'll talk to everyone next week. All of our people in the chat. Cool. Okay. Bye. Bye, everybody. I'm waving at the chat window because you can see me that way. Bye.